There he is again with a funny hat in the forest. Um, Ikea loves Extinction Rebellion and spoons and activism and pulling and pushing. This is what this video is about and that's I think I think it will be quite interesting because I'm pretty sure that it's possible for IKEA to stop selling spoons without any pushing, right? So let's go a little bit into the why. Why why should IKEA stop selling spoons? IKEA and others, uh, spoons and other products also. And yeah, why do we need to think in these ways? Well, I believe that we need to live within a way of thinking of what is needed and what is necessary like need to have versus nice to have need to do nice to do need to have nice to have and when i look at our planet where we are consuming more than one planet per year which is very suicidal that's like really suicidal so if you if you are watching this video and you if I, if somebody would ask you would you consider committing suicide and you'd say no way then you should probably listen to this video to the end because we are committing suicide in the moment and it's a really bad one because we are killing like hundreds of species every day with the way we are killing ourselves and obviously we have a need to explore alternatives we have to create a new story um, one that is not capitalism one that is not exploiting the, the the planet and other species or other humans also and one that is positive right so i personally believe that it's also a matter of choice what side of the i don't know do you want to be on the solution side or on the problem side and of course like it's very easy to be on the problem side and i'm there very much myself with so many things just using this phone making use of this network technology plastics oil um, it's not easy, but it's like at least much easier to start changing. And we can get change happening on three levels. We have the government level. The government can make big, big change. Um, if necessary, very fast. Look at what kind of things are possible with the, with the COVID-19, right? If we understand necessity, we can change big scale quite fast. Um, but usually the government change is too slow, right? Like if you think at the like uh, legislation periods or, or like, um, I don't know, every four years being voted, the change is too slow. Once the new politicians are, you know, familiar with the system uh, and they have like, you know, skipped all their private agendas because a lot of politicians are motivated in a way that is not beneficial for the system. So the, the governmental system can make big change, but pretty slow. On the private individual level, we can make extremely fast change. We can these, these are like split second decisions. Um, do I want to be 100% or as much as possible, as much as I can part of the solution or do I continue uh, with something that I don't know if it's any good? Uh, so we can make split second decisions very fast, but the impact is not big. So government can have big, big impact, um, but usually not fast. And the private level, fast decisions, but the impact might not be so big. Uh, somewhere in between are businesses. A lot of laws are made by businesses, like the whole democracy is so so-called democracy that we are having in the moment here in Eastern Finland. It's like so uh, corrupted by businesses, literally, and very well corrupted. Like it's it's invisible the corruption, almost. But it's it's there, right? You have strong lobbies of strong businesses, and they you know make Im uh, I don't know. Uh, scary big decisions uh, so big impact and fast change possible because the system is made for businesses to react fast right we are valuing um, a GDP over happiness right so obviously the system is made for GDP to grow and for businesses to to benefit uh, of course the benefit and this is where we come to IKEA the benefit is um, yeah short-lived Right, so when you think, if you're working for IKEA, if you're a boss of IKEA, for example, like what is your motivation to do what you do? Is it that you want to exploit others? Is it that you want to just extract resources from the plant that you can't put back? I don't think that this is your motivation. I think the motivation is that you want to live and have a safe, safe space 
uh, for you and maybe for your workers also or for your customers right you want to have something good you have an idea of what is good but at the same time you see that you're not achieving this goal we cannot achieve this goal of having a safe place for us and our families and our children and, and fellow species uh, if we are destroying the planet and, and the biosphere we are living in. So we need change. And IKEA is particularly interesting because IKEA is obviously like in the business league, right? Uh, IKEA is pretty well known all over the world. And IKEA has an amazing code of conduct. The code of conduct of IKEA says um, we strive to meet reality. So what do you mean, IKEA, with that? Because if you really strive to meet reality, you shouldn't do business anymore, right? The reality on this planet is that nature rules. Wherever we are, nature is dominating. Wherever you can die, there is nature. Nature is the only place on Earth. So in nature, as a species, as humans, as individuals, we are allowed to take what we need, not more. Right? We have grown accustomed to taking a lot more than what we need. But there's one thing uh, that I think is very easy to understand, that we don't really need more of those. Right? We are, I mean, we are born naked. Most of the stuff we have, we don't really need. I have a bit of a hay fever in the moment. But, um, so IKEA, there's the code of conduct, back to the code of conduct of IKEA, it's like there's other things, like we um, do what we choose the options that are best for the environment in the long term and, and all kinds of beautiful things. But if IKEA, if you would take this code of conduct into action, you would stop being business. And that's, I think, the way we should be thinking, the way we should be going. We need to create a new story, a new status quo beyond capitalism. So... I have a spoon hanging around my neck here, and this spoon is like, I think this is uh, Rumpelstilzin dancing there. If you know Rumpelstilzin, I don't know if this shows. Yeah, but this is my first spoon. I have this for over 40 years now, this spoon, I believe. And I don't need another spoon, right? I usually eat with one spoon at a time, not more. And... I have never felt the need to buy another spoon. So when we now think of activism, right? We can in activism there is like pushing is very often the way that is used. Activism is a lot of pushing, a lot of blaming, stop this, stop that. And for sure there are like really good reasons for this pushing activism. When pressure to businesses gets inconveniently big, when businesses are not popular, they change their procedures, right? So if we would like have some action after action on IKEA stop selling spoons, for example, uh, eventually IKEA might change uh, their ways of doing things, but not for the right reasons. If IKEA notices nobody is buying spoons anymore, then they would have um, something that is pulling them to stop selling spoons. So we have a situation, strive to meet reality IKEA, we have a reality where we have already more spoons than people on this planet. Right? I, I say this again because I think it's a big one. So we have more spoons than people on this planet. So we have no logical reason to produce, sell or buy any other more spoons. So all the spoons that we have, we should share, give away for free, uh, because everything should be for free, I believe. Like We should just share and, and do everything for free for each other. So. If you believe that spoons, we don't need to buy or sell or produce more spoons, and if you think that it's a good idea to show this to others, walk around with a spoon. Maybe even when you're working at IKEA or another retailer of spoons or producer of spoons, and to show that you don't buy unnecessary stuff anymore. Maybe you like that idea, I don't know. So I'm thinking that there is a possibility, and I think that's really beautiful, I think there is a possibility to, to try something that is pulling on big scale. We have individual decisions that we can make really fast. Like, for example, I don't buy ever another spoon, yeah, because I always carry my own spoon. Um, the impact might not be very big, but if there's enough people doing this, and it's a very easy one, right? Also, spoons are very easy to understand, and I think everybody has a spoon. So think like 
I'm, I'm thinking about hiking stores where they're selling titanium spoons for those people with this like ugh, huge problem of saving two grams and buy a titanium spoon and I have to say at some point I was one of those I have a titanium spoon and if somebody wants it please send me a message I will send it to you uh, no no come pick it up pick it up yes pick it up come here uh, nomad town at the uh, resilience hub in eastern Finland near Joensu and there's lots of other stuff not only spoons uh, that I could share and give away like so yeah I think I have a little paper here with some notes. Why spoons? Well, spoons are easy to understand. Uh, spoons might be necessary. Spoons are plentiful. Yeah, activism, civil disobedience, these things we need. We, we really need to change our status quo and we need to do it really, really fast. So if we do it like this, it might work. It would be really nice to see what happens if like, you know, maybe the spoon is the first domino in, in, in the system to collapse. And I think we should try it and without pushing like just see what happens like i can imagine like uh you know a demonstration of extinction rebellion or some activity or like you know you're just extinction rebellion um supporter uh, you walk around among your friends at home and people see a, a spoon hanging around your neck or or poking out of your pocket or you you're visiting and you say no i want to eat with my own spoon or i don't know like I, I think it and, and maybe share some arguments um yeah and i think it's it's a positive way of doing things like it's not pushing it's not making anyone feel bad it's just making maybe somebody like businesses like ikea and many other other many many other businesses to to rethink um and and not sell and produce things anymore that we obviously don't need like spoons so i think the spoon is just one symbol is just a starting point and yeah it's i think it's a survival issue so that was it the video goes much too long again um if you have any questions any comments please please send them looking forward to and yeah now i think i go and heat up some soup and use my spoon mm -hmm. thank you bye bye